This tutorial is about flood hydrographs. These are special graphs we use in geography, which gives us two vital pieces of information about a river and its basin. The first is that it shows a river's runoff. This is the amount of water flowing in a particular river in a particular place at a particular time, and it also shows rainfall. And I'm going to help you to interpret flood hydrographs. So let's take a look at a hydrograph. On the x-axis you will see time, and this is usually given in hours. And the y-axis um, has two pieces of information. The first easy one to interpret is the rainfall, which is measured in millimetres, and this is indicated um, on the hydrograph as individual bars for each hour. The other piece of information on the y-axis is something called discharge. On my previous graph it was called runoff and this is the amount of water in a river at a particular place. And it's indicated on the hydrograph as this thick blue line which rises and then falls as each hour passes. We're now going to learn about the individual elements of a hydrograph. Where you have the highest amount of rainfall on a hydrograph, this is known as peak rainfall. And where you have the highest amount of discharge, this is known as peak discharge. Now the time difference between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge is known as the lag time. And the lag time you can work out from the x-axis in hours. In an, in an exam it will give you the times and you can um, take one away from the other. So let's say this is 11 a.m. and this one here is um, 9 p.m. the previous night. The time lag between the two is 14 hours. And this will vary from river to river depending on the conditions which we will look at. The place where the discharge rises is known as the rising limb, that's on the left. And when the discharge starts to fall, this is called the falling limb. So referring back to our original hydrograph, uh, we have our rainfall, which is in millimetres on our y-axis, and our runoff or discharge also on the y-axis, and our time on the x-axis. We are familiar with the rising limb and the falling limb, the peak discharge and the peak rainfall, and the time difference between the two is known as the lag time. Other things that you may see on a hydrograph is this, the base flow or groundwater flow. That's the water table. That's the flow of the water in a normal flowing river. And you may also see something called bank full discharge. And this is the limit that a uh, river can hold water before it starts to overflow. So in a river channel, that would be the bank full discharge and anything over the top, river in flood, this is when the water is overflowing the river bank. So now let's take some time to look at what affects the shape of a hydrograph. Vegetation has an important influence on the shape of a hydrograph. Let's take a look at these two instances. Where you have a landscape which is void of vegetation, so it is bare, maybe there's been some deforestation. When it rains onto this landscape, the water will quickly fall and it will make its way overland or underground into the river very quickly. And so on this flood hydrograph, you can see there is a very quick rising limb and then a falling limb. But the diagram on the right, when it rains and there is vegetation through a forest, the water will be intercepted 
by the leaves. Um, it may even be stored within the vegetation. It will take its time to filter through into the soil and then through perhaps as groundwater flow or through flow into the river. This may take several hours, days even, which is why the green hydrograph line here has a much longer lag time and also the forest hydrograph line is much flatter. Um, this is known as a non-flashy hydrograph whereas the bare ground one is known as a flashy shape. Valleyside steepness also influences the shape of the hydrograph. When you have a steep valley side and it rains, the water when it reaches the ground will fall very quickly over land and into the river. And this explains why there is a very fast rising hydrograph and then a falling limb. It has a relatively short lag time. Whereas when you have rain which falls on a gentle slope, it will take longer to make its way into the river. And this is why the gentle hydrograph here has a much longer lag time. It takes much longer to reach peak discharge before it then falls. Steep sided valley sides have a flashy hydrograph, the gentle one has a non flashy hydrograph shape. And finally, soil type. Where we have an impermeable soil, that is one which does not absorb water, for example, clay, when it does rain onto the landscape, the water will not be absorbed. So the water will flow over the surface and into the river relatively quickly. Hence the flashy steep hydrograph here with a short lag time. Whereas on a landscape which is predominantly chalk geology, which is permeable, the water will be absorbed by the chalk and it will eventually make its way as groundwater flow into the river, but this may take quite a while. It can take days, which is why the permeable shaped hydrograph is non-flashy. It has a much longer lag time and it is more shallow.